All right, hi everybody. I'm uh, last, hopefully not least, uh, but I will comment that uh, one of my other lives, uh, I'm a musician, I'm an electric bass player, and the name of my current band is The Probers. So I'm very familiar with working with fellow probers here, so I hope we'll have a good engagement. Um, I'm, my name is Steve Legensky. I'm the founder and general manager of Intelligent Light. We're a small company that makes software for post-processing CFD results. And it's kind of a unique spot to be in because we get to see applications from defense to aerospace to automotive to food processing all around the world. So our, our main uh, topic today is breaking the disk I.O. bottleneck in CFD by eliminating it. And a lot of people have talked about this topic uh, in various ways today, including the fellow who just went before me who said, we cannot possibly save the raw data. And this is going to become more and more of an issue in simulation, and we're already addressing it, and I thought I would talk about that today. Um, another interesting uh, side point is the big data problem. Um, in my opinion, someone has a big data problem when their data is too big for them. So when somebody says, how big is data, is big a data? If you're waiting hours to process data and not doing anything, you have a big data problem. It's very simple, if you're not productive. So we've kind of been seeing this for about 20 years, because it's always the case that computers can produce the data faster than people can move it around their network or copy it or do things with it. So in light of that, I'm going to talk about a technique that we didn't originate, but we're really trying to push and make popular and useful today. So just a little background about CFD workflows. Um, so you start with a small amount of data, like a shape of a car or something, and then you put it into a good HPC resource, and then you end up with gigabytes of files. And it turns out that most of the content of that file is data that was used for calculation. It was useful. It was needed for the calculation but it's not needed for the extraction of knowledge. If you want to know what the drag is on a car or an airplane, you're really concerned with the surfaces of that car or airplane. And that's less than 10% of the data that's in the whole file. So classically, what's happened is people make these workflows, they build a mesh, they do the calculation, and they get large files. So there's one example in the top uh, right corner, just a wing and half of a body, uh, high lift configuration. One case, it's 54 gigabytes of disk file. Um, the, if you did that over with an unsteady calculation, ran it for 1,000 time steps, that's 54 terabytes of storage. And if you want to do 1,000 designs, that's 54 petabytes of storage. So that's obviously too much to really be able to do anything with. If you look at the wing and the body and some cut planes with seven flow variables on there, that's 200 megabytes of data. So the difference between that is 100 to 1,000 times savings if you just save what you need. So part of the puzzle here is that if you can save what you need, take it directly from the memory of the solver code without writing all the files to disk, copying somewhere, reading them in, and then getting to the heart of the matter, you have a tremendous workflow savings. Um, some of the benefits are the solver throughput is increased. We saw a lot of good charts uh, yesterday about stopping the solver, stopping calculation while you're doing disk I.O. That goes away. Post-processing is 1,000, 100 to 1,000 times faster because you don't have to read the stuff in and you don't have to wait an hour for it to copy. So uh, in our product, commercial product field view, we have something called an extract database, which is this heart of the matter, the stuff that you really need. And we've been recently working, the last three years, with the guys at Livermore, we've uh, commercialized the VISIT code, which is their production visualization code, open source. You link that into your solver, and you're able to write these extracts and extract files directly from the solver memory to disk in a much reduced form. This is not new breakthrough technology, but it is not used primarily because people think their results files are precious. I've gone through all this work to calculate the thing. I need to have it around. And you know, finally, it's getting to the point where you just can't save the files anymore. It's just not possible. And I'm going to give you an, an example, show a short movie, where a calculation was done at one of the HPC centers in Maui. And the post-processing was done at Pax River in Maryland. 
and it's 45 seconds of real simulation of a helicopter landing on the back of a ship. And there was no way possible to not only store the data in Maui, but forget about getting it over. I mean, they would have had to have suitcases full of disks on an airplane to bring it out to Pax River. But by making the extracts in Maui, they were able to FTP them conveniently over to Pax River. So you, you don't have to worry about the disk space, you don't have to worry about time. And I'll make a comment about disk space from one of my large customers, that it may be cheap to go to Staples and buy a drive, but in a big organization, the total cost of ownership of disk space is actually pretty high. So, um, but you do have to give up your big file. So that's the disruptive part of this. You have to give up your file. So um, you extract the high value data directly. You do domain and physics-based data reduction directly on the HPC resource. And the idea is you operate on the data arrays in memory. You have two different ways to do this. You can stop the solver, do post-processing right in the same memory space, and write the extract. Or you can use something called in transit, where you'd ship the data off to another set of nodes to do the post-processing so the solver can continue. This is well-known stuff in Department of Energy. Um, it's been pioneered. Oak Ridge has stuff uh, called Adios that does this. But commercial ISVs and, com and, and people are just not using this stuff enough. So the, the whole idea is remove these physical, economical, and psychological barriers to scaling by removing this disk problem. And in the future, people are going to manage thousands and thousands of jobs on these large machines. There's just no way to even keep track of the directories. So Earl, if you come over, I'll show a 45-second movie, and you guys can start probing me during the uh, movie. <laughs> Doesn't have sound. So this is the 45-second uh, helicopter landing movie. So once you have the extracts, you can choose the views, you can change the variables, you can produce whatever you want in the movie locally without ever having the big files there. So this is a coupling of CFD with a flight simulator code called CASTLE. It's a real model for the helicopter. The helicopter's actually flying with six degree of freedom physics. Pulls up to the back of the ship. And the whole purpose of this study is to, re is to recognize the effect of the vortex structures shed from the ship and how they're sucked into the rotating helicopter blades. So you see as the helicopter starts going down to land, the vortex structures are advected into the blades and that actually changes the lift on one side of the helicopter and it tilts to a side as it lands. And the purpose of this simulation project was not to make the movie. They wanted a, a histogram of the forces and moments, but they needed the movie to make sure the helicopter was actually flying to the ship. So that's my story. So thanks, Steve. Um, I have one question is if I'm gonna run a CFD simulation that uses thousands of processors and runs for multiple hundreds of hours, I'm still going to be writing checkpoint files, right? Well, that's up to you. That's your side of the story, but you don't have well, to write post-processing files. Well, if I had the checkpoint file, I could go back to it and generate no, graphics? Uh, so, no, because uh, let's say you're doing aeroacoustics of a launch. You want to star, store, You want to do stuff at 50 kilohertz? So you can't store all that data that fast. Your checkpoint files are usually every couple of hours of running. So you want to be able to have the flexibility to extract temporal data at the right physics rate that you want. Checkpoint files are too coarse generally for this. OK, that's a question. Thanks. You guys let me off easy. Yep. Lunch time. All right, good. Yeah, <laughs> lunch time. Thank hey. you all. Thanks. Great. We'd cool. like to thank the entire panel. Yes.